one who is unwilling to say that he is unfit to be president of the United States is unfit themselves to be president of the United States. Folks, just think about that word mash that just came out of Chris Christie's mouth. Someone who won't say they're unfit to be president of the United States is unfit to be president of the United States. Does that even make any effing sense? I'm going to repeat that one more time. Go back to it and listen to it. And you guys just let me know. What do you think about that? Let's go back to the clip and then we'll allow the whole video to go ahead and play through. Anyone who is unwilling to say that he is unfit to be president of the United States is unfit themselves to be president of the United States. Stupid state. Chris Christie, the former governor of New Jersey, the chief Trump critic in the Republican primary field, dropping out of the race tonight. Before he dropped out tonight, there had been a lot of armchair speculation that if he dropped out, that might most benefit Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. Haley does appear to be the most viable candidate against Trump right now, but Steve Kornacki knows these things. He's been looking at these numbers. We're going to be talking with him in just a moment. One last thing before we do that, though, I will note that just before Christie's prepared remarks where he dropped out, he was also caught on a hot mic, apparently commenting on Haley's chances of beating Trump and winning the nomination. He himself did not seem to think highly of those chances. Here is what he said. Yeah, I mean, look, she spent $68 million so far just on TV. Spent 68 million so far, 59 million by DeSantis, and we spent 12. You know, and she's going to get smoked, and <laughs> you and I both know it. She's not up to this. She hasn't even been. She's still 20 points behind Trump in New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Steve Karnacki, oh yeah. You have been looking. Yeah, at yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Scientifically yeah. speaking, is Nikki Haley in fact going to get smoked? Well, I think it depends what state you're talking about. And I think that gets to a key question when we look ahead to the bigger picture of the Republican uh, nomination battle here. It's in any given state, who makes up the electorate? What's the demographic mix in these Republican electorates? And just show you here our most recent poll. And this is a couple weeks ago. We're going to have a final one this weekend with the Des Moines Register. But this is our most recent Iowa poll. Donald Trump way, way in front. That battle for... Take a look at this here, folks. 51... DeSantis, 20. Haley, 16. This is in Iowa. Yeah, I am wondering if she's... A, is she really going to get smoked? Oh, my goodness. ...second between DeSantis and Haley, and it's explained by dissecting the Iowa electorate. This is the group that's powering Donald Trump more than any other, evangelical Christians. In the 2016 caucuses in Iowa, they were almost two-thirds of the electorate. Nearly two out of every three votes cast in those caucuses were by evangelical Christians. Trump lost them by double digits in 2016. He's now running up massive margins with them. You see Haley's barely in double digits. Where is Haley doing well in Iowa, comparatively speaking? It's among independent voters. They make up about a fifth of the Republican electorate in Iowa. And there you still see Trump in our poll ahead, but Haley's uh, closest to him, over 20 percent. And we'll see in our poll this weekend, there's indications elsewhere she's been gaining with independent voters. Maybe it'll be higher in our final poll. We'll take a look at that. But that's what maybe it'll be higher in our final poll. Maybe, you know, maybe Nikki Haley will be able to upset him in Iowa amongst independents. And then the independent vote will be coming out. I mean, if Donald Trump wasn't able or didn't get a huge majority of evangelicals and now he's crushing it with them, what do you think he's doing with Republicans that are not evangelicals? What do you think he's doing with independents that are leaning away from the Democratic Party? I mean, come on. why Trump's so far ahead and Haley's so far behind in Iowa. Take a look at New Hampshire. We've had a bunch of new polls come out, average them together. This is a very different picture. Mm -hmm. Trump is still in the lead, but Haley's only 11 points behind on average. You see Christie sitting there at 12 percent. A ton of Christie support come, has come in New Hampshire from independent voters, and that is also true with Nikki Haley. In all three recent polls in New Hampshire, she has led among independent voters. And independent voters in New Hampshire make up a, a very bigger portion of the electorate than in Iowa and in any other state. Just take a look at this. This is comparing the demographics of the Republican caucus electorate in Iowa. This is from 2016 with the New Hampshire Republican primary electorate. Look at this. In Iowa, we said it's nearly two-thirds evangelical. In New Hampshire, it's a quarter evangelical. Independent voters, a fifth of the Iowa electorate, 
more than 40 percent in New Hampshire. And remember, in 2016, there were Democratic and Republican primaries in New Hampshire at the same time. Not much of a Democratic race this year when it's been one party having a primary. The independents tend to be even bigger. So we could have something close to 50 percent independent vote in New Hampshire. Moderates, again, 14 percent in the Iowa Republican caucuses, double that in New Hampshire. This is a, a demographic mix that's tailor-made for a candidate like Nikki Haley, who's doing very well with independents, doing very well with college-educated Republicans, suburbanites. The problem for Nikki Haley is that when you get beyond Iowa and New Hampshire and all the other Republican primaries and caucuses out there, the demographic mix tends to look a lot more like Iowa and a lot less like New Hampshire, and that includes what could be the next big contest coming out of New Hampshire, South Carolina, a month later. The evangelical share in Nikki Haley's home state of South Carolina, 72% in mm. 2016. Steve Karnacki, thank you very much. Talking about South Carolina, if there's 72% evangelicals, I mean, Trump is already, le I mean, if you get smoked in your own home state by 20 plus points, or even 10 plus points. Folks, somebody is telling you something. The people of the home state are telling you something. They're telling you that we don't even like, and not only that, but you were the governor. You were like the president of your state. And the people that you represented are basically telling you Nah, we still want the other guy. We still want the other person. Even though you were a governor, we don't want you to take your ideas and what you did here and take it national. I mean, it is like, it is absolutely ludicrous the way that MSLSD here is just trying to push. They're just hoping and praying and if somehow, if somehow it like single digit wins for Trump in New Hampshire, I mean, if somehow that were to happen, the storyline is going to be Nikki. And I guess that would be that she outperformed and she brought a, you know, from double digits down to single digits. And that's going to give her a head of steam going into South Carolina. I mean, that's what the storyline is going to read. And if it comes as it is right now with what we're seeing in every single poll in the Iowa caucuses, in the primary in New Hampshire, if Trump holds on or extends his leads and makes an even bigger impact than what even the polls are showing, it's just going to be full steam ahead to try to derail Trump even more. And they're going to be perplexed, the mainstream media, as to what's going on, they're going to ask the question. They're going to say, where do those votes come from? Then I'd like to hear what they have to say about those independents, about those evangelicals, about those left-leaning Republicans. Because there are still Republicans within the party that are moderate, that are still part of the neocon constituency. Very small percentage, but there are some you know, Liz Cheney, Dick Cheney, George Bush, Pierre Delecto, you know, <laughs> crowds that are out there. And those guys are definitely going to be voting or caucusing, you know, with either DeSantis or Vivek or with Nikki Haley to do anything that they can to derail, you know, Trump in the caucuses or the primaries. Anyways, folks, we appreciate the uh, that you took the time to take to watch our video. We hope this gave you a little bit of idea, a little snapshot of what's going on right now. And to hear it from a alphabet network that is, you know, so vehemently opposed, you know, to Donald Trump. We'd love for you to subscribe to the channel if you found our content uh, interesting. You know all what to do. Go ahead and smack that subscription bell, like, share, and follow us. Take a look at our other video links above and below. I'll leave with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right, and when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.